Hello, everybody, and welcome again to Keystone Film Review. We saw a couple days ago, mm -hmm. Trap, written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan, starring Josh Hartnett, uh, Ariel Donahue, Salika Shyamalan, Allison Pill, and many others. Uh, this, of course, is the latest M. Night Shyamalan movie, where he had the concept of what happens if a serial killer is being hunted at a Taylor Swift concert, I believe is his words. That's how he came up with it, had that thought. <laughs> Pretty Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, if you are familiar with us here at KFR, you know we are, for lack of a better word, M. Night apologists. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't like his stuff. We do because it's different. He's a local and we have and he to. He just likes to make his movies. He, he likes to care. make his movies. He's, he's in unapologetically himself. And mm -hmm. I respect that. Uh, M. Night is the filmmaker that made me want to become a filmmaker in the first place. I admit his stuff does not. You know, reach the heights that it used to with Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, Signs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and uh, but I still enjoy his movies because they're different. You know, they yeah. feel they feel fresh, uh, even if they're a little bit weird. Uh, <laughs> but yes, uh, speaking of weird, uh, I think the weirdest part about this one, and then Glenn, I'll let you talk for a bit. Good. Yeah, hit me up. Uh, the weirdest part of this one is his daughter. In my opinion, not so much that like, you know, I don't think her music's bad or whatever. It's not my style, but I don't think the music's bad. It mm -hmm. just feels very shoehorned in because it's his daughter. Mm -hmm. And then that becomes more apparent without getting into spoilers. She becomes more involved in like the second half of the film. And then once that hits, it's just kind of like, OK, this is feels forced. Uh, but overall, I thought it was, you know, Good. I really like Josh Hartnett in it. Um, I thought he was mm -hmm. he was great. But uh, yeah, Glenn, what did you think? Uh, like like we said, we love some M Night. Uh, guy guy just makes films. He's he's a beautiful man. He's a beautiful mm -hmm. creature. Mm -hmm. um, I I think I think I kind of agree with what you said. I think he made this movie kind of more for his daughter than anything. Not you yeah. know the fact that it was uh, you know hey daughter here's this super creepy thing. But I think he wanted to do it, like be involved with her because he made uh, well sh uh, his other daughter made a movie and we watched that earlier the Watchers, yeah, watchers, yeah. Um, so I feel like he's kind of kind of opening the family tree a little bit more and getting them more involved with stuff. So it's it's cool that uh, he's doing that. Yeah. Um, and hundred percent behind that. Um, did it feel a little bit forced? I think towards the end. I think absolutely because she kind of just became a major character she was always in the first half but she was never like a character she was yeah. a backdrop the closer it got on. to her being someone other than a backdrop it was that's when it started getting weird for me mm -hmm. um and, and not necessarily weird in a bad way it just kind of felt you know forced and campy a it, bit it would have been one thing if he had her involved in like uh, hey, did we catch that guy yet? Like they did in the second half. Like as soon as the second half started, she mm -hmm. did that. But if like he, if she went to the sides and talked to you know the head FBI chick or something like that, and saw that, um, that that she was involved in some way instead of just you know possibly being kind of in the in the unknown about the concert. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, obviously, she would have to know. I think you're legally up, like, you have to legally tell people that, <laughs> you know, we're kind of cracking down on a, a raid here. Yeah. Obviously, not all the uh, the show goers, but to the uh, people in the in the. Th I think if they if he introduced her in some sort of way that was better than the second half of the movie, it wouldn't have felt as, you know, pressed and like. Just here, here she is. Here she is. The rest of the movie, it would have been fine. Mm -hmm. um, she was still fine. She was great. Um, I think I, I I love Josh Hartnett, and I, I don't know. If, I think it's mostly M Night's writing too. That every, everything just felt so campy. Like everything was like like the sitcom TV character families and their their personalities and how they acted. Yeah. Maybe that was like what he was trying to go for. Well, he's always, the, he always uh, has like a weird sense of humor. Yeah, within his thrillers, which makes it like very jarring sometimes. Mm -hmm. And normally, in some of the movies, at least he his characters at least feel normal. They might have some crazy like dialogue to where it doesn't feel feel sort of normal. Mm -hmm. But at least like they usually act like they're normal. Josh and this felt like straight out of 
and this is in a good way too straight out of just like a horror sitcom like movie dad type yeah. thing where he's like hey honey how are you doing and like his face is just like you can't see it right now but like <laughs> i'm doing it to the camera he's just yeah. like hey honey and he's just like the fucking got strain in his face but he's like hey this is normal i'm normal right now <laughs> yeah um i i felt like he was a little too much of a character in this i guess i could say um but other than that i, th- I thought it was a good movie um i don't really it didn't like uh, jump at me and like surprise me in any sort of way mm-hmm. um there was i mean most people are gonna be like where's the fucking m night twist not every one of his movies can have that yeah otherwise i mean dear god he'd be the messiah um but like I, it, there's not something that's gonna like jump out and surprise you in any sort of way it's it's just a good movie um they had a good time i i had some fun josh josh was funny um a lot of the other characters were pretty good too um but it, it wasn't anything that was just like it's gonna be like your favorite movie of yeah. the decade or something like that it was just a good movie just yeah. a good movie it was a, it was a, a you know good popcorn movie um mm-hmm. definitely on the lower end of my ranking of Avonite Shyamalan movies uh I get what you're saying about Josh Hartnett kind of being like a little campy uh mm-hmm. I personally felt that that was on purpose because it was like you know he kind of felt in a way like uh Phil it's, Dumphy from, yeah, from it's, Modern it's Family not, it's not a bad thing I just yeah. say it was, it's just an observation more or yeah, less I'm it, guessing it just overly you know using pet names with his daughter and Mm -hmm. doing dad jokes and i think their dynamic he's a good goddamn dad (laughs) i think their dynamic was weirder than his performance was yeah where like i mean granted i i don't have a daughter i have two sons both of them are too young to hate me yet uh but (laughs) i feel like at her age she would not be as you know like forgiving of his weirdness. Mm. She's like, dad, you're being weird. Like what's, I feel like she's like, you're being weird. You know? Yeah. I, I feel like there'd be a, a, a little more attitude behind it. Again, I don't have daughters. I grew up with two sisters. That's all I know about teenage girls and they hate <laughs> everyone and everything. Yes. Uh, and, um, so I feel like it was more their dynamic than it was his performance, but I, I do see what you're saying there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think for me, and this goes back for the past few M night Shyamalan movies, M. Night Shyamalan used to be visually stunning. Mm-hmm. His films used to have fantastic cinematography uh, to the point where they were like inspiring. Like there, there were there are shots in like the, the opening of Unbreakable. The entire first scene is shot completely through a, a mirror, and it's mm-hmm. incredible. Uh, there's uh, you know even shots in the village for people who don't really care for that. There's wonderful shots in the village, and. I don't know if it's just like him wanting to get. Oh, my light just went out. Uh oh. I'm a little dark right now. Uh, but uh, I don't know if it's just him wanting to get stuff done, or you know, kind of like losing the the passion for making something visually interesting, or if it's just the DPs he's working with that you know they're either newer or just not wanting to make things too complicated. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I feel like visually his movies have gone downhill uh, the past you know. 10 or so years. Um, I guess, I guess to excuse this movie, like he did film half of it in a stadium. Yeah. That's so, another thing. It's, it's, it's low budget for what I'm assuming that they did. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the budget is, but like, so, I mean, it looks, it looks like a concert. Yeah. And so I guarantee theoretically you, they, they were on a schedule and they, yeah, you know, they probably had to crank shots out. Like, yeah, right, we got to so, move on. We can't stop. Got to keep going. Yeah. Assuming. I, I, yeah, so that that might be you know they had to do just basic shots. It, mm-hmm. It's I don't remember it too much in the cabin, the cab, knock at the cabin, but like this, it really stuck out to me. It was like it wasn't as exciting as M Night Shyamalan movies usually are, visually speaking. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know, to the point where I, I might one day do a, a video on the decline of his cinematography throughout oh. his, his films. We'll see. I don't know. I thought about it this morning. I might decide not to. Who knows? Because that's a lot of work. I got two kids. You got to do. You got to do a decline, and then you got to do an incline, and then maybe, like a maybe like a even bar. Yeah, <laughs> an even bar. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I mean, other than that, it was fine. Uh, I feel mm-hmm. like. <laughs> 
it got a little too ridiculous at the end where it just like like Return of the King kept ending and then yeah. coming back and then ending and then coming back. Uh, but it made it entertaining ultimately. Um, and um. Uh, Jamie is the MVP of the entire film. Just throwing that out there. Woo, Jamie. Woo. <laughs> um, one huge thing is I am very on board with a little Josh Hart net renaissance. A yes. Horror, horror renaissance. Yes. Uh, you know, teen girls were huge on him in the early 2000s. <laughs> Uh, now, uh, men in their thirties are huge on him now. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excited the, to see him and stuff. And the women are still huge on him. The uh, women that, are still that huge never on him. left. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, but it's, it's not as, you know, it doesn't have quite the fervor that it did when they were teenage girls. Yeah. He, he left because fame was getting to begin like too much. So yeah. he was just like, someone, all right, I'm going to chill out. <laughs> someone brought a gun to one of his premieres and he was like, I'm going to live in England for a bit. <laughs> yep. Don't blame him, but I'm yeah. completely on board with him doing more movies again because I, yeah. I loved him when he was doing this stuff in the 2000s. Mm-hmm. And I hope that he continues his career flourishingly. He was just in The Bear, too. And also Oppenheimer. Uh, also Oppenheimer. Uh, best picture for the Oscars and Stony nominee Oppenheimer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but yes, so uh, yeah, I don't really have too much else to say. No. Uh, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed, but that's more just me like just liking at my Shyamalan. Uh, but there was enough there that it kept me intrigued. It's just it's pretty much just any time his daughter was too much on screen. That was just like I don't know. It just they wouldn't. I think they huge... wouldn't give Taylor Swift FBI clearance. I'll, let's just say <laughs> that. No, I think a huge thing is it. There's moments where it feels like it's got stakes, but it doesn't feel like there's enough stakes. Yeah. Like, you don't, it doesn't really show how really dangerous he is. Yeah. But, like, I, ha- I wish it did that a little bit more. Like, they, they did at one point in the stadium. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, that's as far as, like, he, they kind of went. And obviously, he's dangerous. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. why he's got the FBI on him. But last thing I will say that I really appreciate, you know, I, I like reading about serial killers, I find it fascinating. Uh, mm-hmm. Not in like a I want to I admire these people way. Just like I think that the mentality of having zero empathy for other people mm-hmm. is interesting. Uh, and Josh Hartnett, and th- this is what I was talking about. Like he played it really well. Did the whole like kind of copying people's mannerisms, which is something that you know p- serial killers do because they don't have any empathy. So what they do to try to fit in is copy people. And he would do that where he would just like kind of look at who he's talking to and mm-hmm. they, they would smile and he would smile and just stuff like that. It made it like creepy knowing that he was a serial killer. But if you didn't know he was a serial killer, it just seemed like he was a normal dude. Uh, and that was one thing I appreciated that, you know, it was a good, good demonstration. As far as I know, of course, I'm not a profiler like the British lady in this because <laughs> apparently the FBI can't find any American profilers. <laughs> Even she's though just, Americans, she's just on a different. Even level, though man. Americans invented profiling, <laughs> mm-hmm. actually, I don't know if that's true. I've, if Mind Hunter is true, then that's it's true. But, uh, but yeah, overall, decent movie. Yep. Uh, but I can I understand the hate it's getting. It, you know, it's, it's getting a bit yeah a bit I, of hate I, right now. I didn't hate it. I liked it. Was it disappointing to compare to like his last couple movies? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm always glad to see an M Night movie. So same here, same here. I'm I'm okay with it. Yeah, uh, ratings. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can go first. Okay. I'm pretty sure I gave it a three a couple days after. I had to mm-hmm. think about it for a second, uh, but I think I gave it a three out of five. Nice. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I gave it. Three out of five. Ooh. Um, two and a half felt too low. Yeah. Uh, I, I was nowhere near giving it a three and a half, but two three and a half, and a half too low. was very generous. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, I, I gave it a three as well. Look at that. Yes. So that is what we thought of Trap and mm. Shyamalan's latest movie with his daughter, Salika mm. Shyamalan. Yep. Uh, if you saw Trap, let us know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, what concert would you go to if you were a serial killer and uh, you were going <laughs> to get caught? Uh, for me, I would probably say... Mm, I don't know. I, I don't have a funny thing to say there. I, I thought I would, but I don't. Well, it's, it's kind of scary. Earth, fire. There we go. I'm going to a concert next week, so I hope I don't get yeah. caught there. <laughs> We're possibly going to a concert in a month. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah be busy boys. Yes, busy we boys. Are. <laughs> I'll get the handcuffs. Don't worry, guys. 
Uh, it's going to be really easy to find us in Levi the Poet's costume. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Spoiler <everybody>. alert. <coughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>